Hi everyone, welcome to my channel AmitSarkar.Tech. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a password manager called KeePass. Now, in today's world, we have a lot of usernames and passwords to manage. And uh, there are a lot of pa password managers already in the market that some of you might be using and some of you may not have ever even heard of a password manager. Now, the reason I'm talking to you about KeePass today is because I've been using it for a very, very long time to manage most of the passwords regarding my bank accounts, my credit cards, my investments, my tax, my insurance, my email, my social media profile, my shopping accounts, etc, etc. So I've categorized most of my passwords now into different categories and I have maintained one single file. Now, this is an offline solution and it does it may not work for a lot of people but i found it the most secure way of storing passwords because the password file is stored on my machine i encrypt it with a password a single password and that encrypted file i'm i load it on google drive onedrive etc so it means the passwords are stored on the cloud but they are encrypted or password protected so i'm not storing plain text or cipher text passwords on a cloud server. So let's start uh, having a look as to what we are going to uh, see regarding KeePass. So uh, I start the browser and I type KeePass and I'll just accept and here it is. KeePass Password Safe is a free open source password manager primarily for Windows. It officially supports through the use of Mono. So yes, it is a Windows only app. I personally use Windows uh, 10 at the moment on my laptop and uh, it's uh, quite good um, and uh, I don't have any issues. But for people who want who want to use it on Mac or Linux, there are other options and I'll cover it in the end. So let's first go to the website, key pass. I'll just accept, uh, maybe I'll just decline. I don't want to see any passwords. And here it is, key pass, password save. This is the official website of KeePass, the free open source lightweight and easy to use password manager. Well, it is actually very lightweight. So it doesn't consume a lot of memory when you start it. And um, it's very easy to manage and it's completely offline. And you can carry the file on your mobile. I, I mean, I use it on my mobile and it's really good. So let's see. So let's go to downloads and let's go to download now. Okay, so here is the latest version 2.51.1 and here it is 1.40.1. So I don't want to use this version. I'll use the 2.51.1. Now bear in mind, I've already installed it. I'm just showing you how it is. So yeah, I'll keep it. And then what I'll do is I will open when done. So let's see, it shows that it's downloaded. Yeah, now it's downloaded. So I'll say open and okay yeah there's a pop-up uh, to show whether it's in whether uh, i need admin permissions or not and i've accepted it as yes now i go to select setup language and here is english so i'll just click on okay i click on i accept the agreement i click on next and then i use I just select the standards and then I associate key pass with .kdbx file extension. So normally like an Excel file comes with .xls or Word file comes with .doc or executable on Windows comes with .exe. Here it comes with .kdbx. So I'll just click on next. It'll give me a summary of what I want to install and uh, let's see what happens if I install it. I already have it on my machine so it'll just overwrite the existing installation so it's just taking final steps it is actually very very easy so i'll just say launch key pass finish and it's actually open in another window and here it is so when you open uh, key pass this is what you see so let's see the about so this is key pass password safe version 2.51.1 it is 64 bit and yeah everything is installed everything is fine so now let's see what are the different options so here it is new database open database etc etc now everything else is hidden because at the moment 
we have not opened any database and as you can see I can see title username password URL can I see something else let's see I can't scroll this left to right so let's open a new database so I'll click on this icon here cancel and if I click on new here so there are two options I can create a new database by clicking this icon or I can go to file and click on new so let's see I'll do this it will give me a warning your data will be stored in a key pass data file which is a regular file after clicking OK you'll be prompted to specify the location where key pass should save this file it is important that you remember where the database file is stored you should regularly create a backup of the database file onto an independent data storage device okay so I will try to save it in documents here yeah? and it says database.kdbx okay that's fine so master password so I'll say this is master password so I've not written something but we can't see it so let me untick this and see what happens so there's no password so I cannot save this file without a password and if I tick it I still can't see what I've actually written it just shows me that it's 20 characters it is about 48 bits it shows the strength of it uh, I don't know how it is so let's see this is master password okay this is what I've written I'll say this is master password for my test database now this is a very long password this is master password for my test database no I don't want to remember this long so what I'll do is I'll just write test database so as you see the more I type the quality improves and I can see how many characters I've typed so as I type more and more numbers and characters and special characters etc the strength keeps increasing so password length is 47 characters and 180 bits uh, when you store it and then estimated quality is very very high of course in real life scenarios you won't have such a long password so what I'll do is just test database I'll just say test okay just for demo purposes so now I've created a key pass file or a database called database.kdbx and the master password is test and I will let's see if I click on show export options well that's just too many so let's not go through that and I just click on OK the specified master password is weak are you sure that you want to use this master password so it checked the quality of the password that I selected and it normally recommends to select a very good password in this case because it's a demo I don't want to remember something very big I've just selected this uh, test as the master, master password and I'll just click on OK and I'll say yes I want to use this as the master password so database name so let's say accounts okay so what does this mean so you have opened a database file on that database file you've opened a okay so here we have emergency sheet so let's see if what will it show okay I don't want to print this emergency sheet but let's see what happens if I print an emergency sheet emergency and I save it and then I go to documents and emergency.pdf and here it is so I have now downloaded the emergency sheet I know the name of the database and I can write my password here so this is a sheet which I can file it offline or not on a computer and I can uh, save it suppose you want to write a will uh, and you want to share the password once you die with your spouse or your children and you don't want to share it when you're alive but you want to share it when you pass away so this is a good way to put it as part of a will so I think this is quite clever so now let's go back to uh, our database so now I selected database.kdbx here it is database and here it's giving me some sample options so on this side you have the categories so general windows network internet email home banking etc each category has an icon and these categories are basically nothing but folders this is my main database if I right click I'll say add group add group means add a folder so let's say insurance so it's add a category insurance now I want to add an entry here um, 
so this is the icon to add an entry or I click on entry and I say add entries and there is a shortcut control I so I go on add entry now normally what I do is because I'm from India and I have accounts in both India and UK shopping accounts credit cards etc I normally do IND a toggle and then say Amazon and if I want a UK account I do UK Amazon okay and then I can give my name or I can give say Johnny so this just helps me to remember whose account it is or I just say UK Amazon Amit or UK Amazon Johnny so this is just a way where I use this uh, particular application and it's up to you how you want to use it and how you want to remember so let's see what happens um, and of course you can select an icon whatever you want so let's say I want to select a globe or no I because it's related to shopping let me select a shopping basket so I can't see shopping so let me just select this okay so I've now got an icon for this and I can put a username so let's say Amit at test.com and the password so now here what has happened is it has auto generated a 20 character password 110 bits very strong if I want to use it well I just click on OK that's it saved with an icon and there's nothing else now if I want to open that entry again I can click on URL I can click on password I can click on username or I can click on title if you want to open it click on the title so it's open and I see the password um, it's good and here I can mention the Amazon URL and if it is Amazon normally what I do is I go to the browser I go to amazon.co.uk and then I go to the sign in page and here I have an option okay so no it doesn't work so what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll click on sign in and I'll see this page and here is the link so normally I'll save this link but in this case the link is quite long so I'll not save this I'll just save this one so I know that if I have saved this login for Johnny for a UK account of Amazon then this is the username and this is the password and I can have any password I want but for now let's assume that this is Johnny's account I'll just change the username to Johnny at test.com and uh, I've stored the URL now you might have noticed something interesting if I hide the password or if I click this toggle show or hide using asterisks if I click on it by default it's hidden but if I click on it the password goes visible and the repeat is hidden if I click it again the repeat starts showing now what does it mean it basically means that uh, if you want to store your password without if someone is watching over your shoulders then you have to type it twice but if no one is watching over your shoulders and there is no camera that's watching your screen then you can just click this and you can just write in plain text so because you're easy to it's e easy to see if there is someone behind or there is a camera you have to type it twice so you remember what you have written okay and it can also generate a password for you so let's say I click on generate a password so let's see WRC so I click on generate I will say let's generate a hex 40 or 256 bit password so it's generated a 256 bit password no I don't want that I'll go for 128 bit so it's generated that uh, I want 40 bit it's generated something like that I will click on open password generator and I will say okay generate using character set uppercase lowercase digits and special characters okay I click on okay and it's generated and if I select 128 bit and I will open this and here length of generated password so here I'll say uppercase lowercase digits special case and I'll say 40 okay so it's generated a 40 character password for me I don't have to do anything and it 
matches most of the criteria in majority of the websites where they ask you to have a special character, have a lowercase, have uppercase, have a number, etc, etc. This does it all for you. But if you already have a password, just delete. So I've deleted it and now what I do is I just go type my password, test password. That's it. And it says it's a weak password, but that's what it is. And if you want to change it, you change it on the website and then you store it here. That's the whole idea. So let's click on OK. And you can see a star symbol here. This means that the file is not saved and I can see the save button, which is blue. If I click on save, it becomes gray. So it means if whenever you are in doubt whether your file has been saved or not, just look at this icon. If it is gray, it means the file is saved. If it is blue, it means any changes that you have made has not been saved. Now, okay, so how do we use this password manager? So I've created one entry under insurance. Now let's say I want to create another entry for India. And I'll say Amazon and I'll say Johnny and it is Johnny at Amazon.co.in and I have password test2 and the URL is https amazon.co.in okay and it's Johnny okay so now as you can see I can see the title username password URL and there is a notes here so I'll just unhide it a bit yeah and I'll do this do this and do this okay and I see the blue icon the save is in blue so I'll just click on it so it's saved now I have two entries so I should just change it from shopping to sorry insurance to shopping so I've changed the category so now it's shopping I just save it again and it's done if you want to save the whole thing just press ctrl s and it'll save it for you now so suppose you have already a entry say UK Amazon Johnny and I want to duplicate this entry I don't want to fill in everything again because it just change in country so what I do is let me just delete this okay I'll delete it yes and then I'll just click right click it and then I'll say duplicate entry and don't copy history that's all and it'll append hyphen copy to the entry so it creates a copy for me pre-filled what I do is I just go there I just modify IND I remove the copy I change the email say test.co.in and I use the same password and I change the URL that's it all done I didn't have to fill a lot of details and then I to press Control S and everything is saved now I want to open this website so I have the brave browser open and if I click this let's see what happens it'll open Chrome because Chrome is the default browser on my machine so it opened Chrome and it opened the URL now what actually happened I double clicked on the URL so I single click selects the entry double click on the URL it opens the URL actually right or if I double click the title it opens the entry so I can edit the entry now what happens if I double click the username it gets copied and it gets copied for a few seconds and after that it will get removed from your uh, system so sorry the copy option so let's open notepad I have opened notepad here oh my god it's quite big so let's make it small okay and let's make it here and this I'll make it here okay so I double click control I double clicked on username and I just press control V so it's copied the username I double click on the password it copies the password test password right now what's the interesting thing if so I, I as long as it's green I can paste it but the moment 
that green is gone I can no longer paste it so even if I press control V I cannot paste the password so basically the password is not stored in memory for a long time now this is a very important feature and a very useful feature because sometimes what happens is you leave your machine and someone can just use control V and they can require your password so it is a very intelligent feature which keep us has and I really like that so your username and password even though they are copied they are copied only for a short duration so I don't save it and I go back another thing that you might have noticed is that uh, the passwords and usernames are hidden and we have the whole thing here okay now what if I want to see the username or the password without opening it so control H hides password unhides password so control H to hide control H to unhide control H to hide control H to unhide now username control J J for username the J letter is actually next to your uh, H so let me just show on screen keyboard so if you look at your keyboard H and J are next to each other so if I press control H control H okay so that basically control H hides the password control J hides the username if I press control J again it shows the username if I press control H again it shows the password so these are some shortcut keys now if I want to open the URL so I open the URL and I don't want to control uh, I don't want to copy paste the URL okay sorry the username and password so what do I do I just go to sign in I click on sign in okay here is the email now the email and password are not shown so now there are two things so let's go to say let's go to a very interesting website let's say which website will have username and password in the same section so I'm just thinking uh, let's go to say Tesco Tesco club card yeah Tesco club card sounds about right my Tesco club card account and I click on I don't I have already registered so I will sign in and I have the username and password and username is an email password is an email accept all cookies so I just make sure everything is visible so in this case you have only the email and the password is not visible so I have to copy the password from my file so I can double click and I can just control V it copies the username and once I continue It'll tell me okay and I will double click password and I'll control V and it should give me an error because of course this is not a real account yeah um, so one thing is that you can actually paste the password using a shortcut as well control C and control V so it copies the password and you know why it has copied because I have I can see data copy to clipboard so when I press control C it copies password not the username if I want to copy the username so let's go back change if I want to copy the username I have to press control B I can see that some data has been copied in order to verify what data has been copied I press control V and I see it's the username so again let's go to the on-screen keyboard so control C copies the password control B copies the username control V paste the username or the password so C for the normal user uh, password and B for the username I hope that was useful now what if you don't want to do control B and control C and control V all that so here I I set this here my cursor okay the cursor is prompted here and I go here and I press control V I didn't press control C I didn't press control B I just press control V when you press control V so watch it again so the prompt is selected here so the cursor is highlighting it means it's selected there is no other browser open or no other tab which has this and this is the default browser so I go here I select the entry or say let's say I select this entry the Indian account and I press control V V for victory so now it's copied 
the Indian account details. And if I delete and I go back to UK and I press Ctrl V, it automatically types the UK username and password. And it clicks on the sign in button. It clicks. Sometimes there is an error, sometimes it close. There is a capture, there is a show button, etc. But this is what it does and it shows the sign in. Uh, it uh, clicks on the sign in. So there you have it. So we have now created an entry. We have the username, we have the password, we have the URL, and we have the notes. Another useful feature is advanced. In advanced, you can have, say, account number. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, then you can have credit card number. And, and I'll say one, two, three, four, this. Okay, and you can have pin. And you can have one, two, three, four. And you can have CVV three four three four. Okay, so you can have any detail as you want, and then you can go back and click on OK. So you can even have this notes. The note says this, but say I want to have the account number as this, or the user ID, or etc. etc. So you, I can add it here. I don't have to go to properties, auto type, or history. These are some of the changes that have been made to that file. But what I want to do is I want to add these details. Now, if you look down, you can see the title, the username and password in asterisks. And let's say I unhide both the username and password here. It gets unhidden from the bottom section as well. So I can now see the username and the password. If I press Ctrl H, the password gets hidden. If I press Ctrl J, the username gets hidden. And I also see whatever I have added extra. So whatever I added in advanced, I can actually see it down here. Account number, credit card number, CVV, PIN, all these details, I can see it. Of course, this is plain text. So only the username and passwords are protected. Anything else, it is plain text. So you have to be very careful of what kind of information you want to store here. This is just to give you an idea about the kind of information you can store, okay? So there are many options on open URL, etc., etc. Okay, so you have created a database, you have created a group or a folder or a category, and you have then created entries, you have duplicated entries, you have created username, password, and you have added some additional information. You have learned how to open a URL, you have learned how to enter the username, enter the password, and also enter username and password both at the same time. Now, what if you want to delete? So just click on an entry and press delete. It asks you, fine, deleted. And there is a recycle bin. So now I have seen two entries. So I'll just click on, right click on recycle bin and say empty recycle bin, delete. And I don't want to have the uh, recycle bin as an option. So let's say delete group. So it deletes. Now, suppose I delete this sample entry. It will automatically create the recycle bin for me. And I'll just, I'll delete the group. It will delete the sample entry with it. Okay, so there you have it. So you have been able to now delete an entry. Now, this is not basically sorted properly. It's not alphabetically sorted and there's, it's, yeah, it's difficult, right? So I right click on database and I say rearrange and I say, sort recursively so it's now sorted alphabetically e f g h i j k l m n p q r s t u v w okay so this has now sorted it alphabetically and then i can click on save so now i have a database i have the categories i have the entries and it's all sorted and if i close it so let's say i close close this database okay and then I say open a database, open open a file, and by default I'll go to documents, I'll click on database, and now it asks me for the master password. So I'll just say test, and I click on OK, and it opens the database for me. So there you have it. All your usernames and passwords in a single file based on categories with all the details that you have. Remember, when you create it for the first time, it might take you a lot of time. But the good thing is you have the URL as well. Sometimes you know the website, but you can't remember the URL and you can't even find it out from google.com. So it's better to have all the URLs. And the good thing about having a URL is, say, I want to go to this page. Okay. 
the Tesco page, login page for Tesco Club Card. And this is the URL. Okay. Now let's see what happens. So if I paste the URL here, login. Okay. The beauty of it is I don't have to go and type tesco.com slash account slash login or I don't have to go to tesco.com and then click on sign in etc etc it will automatically take me to the login because I have saved it like that so of course it is a bit of an effort I'm, I'm not sure if everyone will you try to use this feature but this is how I use it I try to save the direct login URL so that when the URL opens I select the prompt so remember you always have to select the first prompt and then go to select the entry and then press ctrl v v for victory and then it adds the username and the password yeah and it clicks on the sign in but in this case the username and password are incorrect so of course we get an error so there you have it so you have now created a key pass database and best thing about this is so let's close this it's already saved so let's close this i will open my documents i think my documents was already open so this file now you can add it to your OneDrive so I have my OneDrive here I can add it to my OneDrive I can add it to my Google Drive I can add it wherever I want and the main thing is it is password protected it is not in plain text or cipher text in a cloud server it is password protected on your machine okay so yeah there you have it Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video was useful. So feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, thank you so much. See you next time.